We've seen a couple Manchester United tactics in the past. This technically isn't a Manchester United tactic, but the creator used Manchester United as his team to build it around. Cristiano Ronaldo getting top goal scorer. It's called the positive 4-2-3-1 goals galore. Can it actually provide? Let's check it out. Yes, the Steam page actually has some information, which is fantastic to see. He's got screenshot, a couple of screenshots, uh, but mainly he says that the tactic was his first tactic for FM23. It was built using Manchester United. Cristiano Ronaldo got top goal scorer, has not used it for a small team yet, but he believes it could work. So not a flowing amount of information on the Steam Workshop page, but at least it's got something, right? But let's take a look at the tactic itself. This is a positive 4-2-3-1 wide custom. Uh, it's a goalkeeper in defend, wing backs on support on both sides, central defender on defend on both sides, a CM in attack, a deep line playmaker on support on the right, inverted winger on the left in attack, shadow striker centrally, inside forward in attack on the right, and then an advanced forward in attack up front. As you can see, it is just a custom style. Uh, based on nothing. Mentality is positive. In possession, attacking width is fairly narrow. Play out defense. Passing directness is shorter. Tempo is slightly higher. Uh, final third is whip crosses. Run at defense. In transition, counter press, counter. Distribute to the fullbacks and the center backs and take short kicks. And out of possession, high press line of engagement. Higher defensive line. Trigger press more often. Prevent short goalkeeper distributions and get stuck in. No opposition instructions. But as you can see... All three teams not doing too badly. Tottenham not doing as great as they should have probably. But Newcastle in Champions League spots. Wolves in 10th. So all three top 10 finishes. And as you can see, four draws and a loss. Not great. And if obviously you picked it up, you were any good at the game. And you're doing your own things, keeping the players motivated. That Wolves team, 56 points, easily could have been in 7th or thereabouts. Um, or at least in 8th. You know, Tottenham probably should have been a little higher too. But overall, it looks so so good so far. But let's keep going. Newcastle schedule. The only real blip in the first section is a 1-4 loss against Chelsea. That one definitely stings. 0-4 against Man City. 0-1 against Manchester United. That one you could have probably maybe have gotten a draw. Uh, but overall, the first half of the season is fantastic. 6-1 over Mansfield. 5-2 over Sheffield United. Uh, it's continuing on in both the FA Cup and the EFL Cup. You're not getting very hard opponents, though, in either cup. So losing out in the first leg of the EFL Cup semifinals, 3-4 against Tottenham, but kicking the crap out of Tottenham, 5-2 to move on to the EFL Cup final, where you win against Manchester City, 3-1. A fantastic first cup right there for Newcastle. I mean, this season did very well for them. Some losses sandwiched in there, not great. 4-5 to five against Aston Villa. Uh, but overall, you've got much better runs than you've got the bad ones. So I think fantastic run overall. Uh, you do lose out that Brentford 1-3 loss in the FA Cup fourth round. But Champions League next season to look forward to with a lot more money. Tottenham, on the other hand, had a rougher start. You could see Champions League group, uh, they're not doing all that well. Loss against Napoli, win against Olympiacos, loss against Real Madrid, loss against Real Madrid. Uh, so overall, where you push down into the yep Europa Leagues, 2-0 over Ludogrets, 2-4 in penalties loss against Ludogrets, but you still move on. Real Betis 1-4, loss to 1-3, Real Betis, so you're out there. Fantastic end of the season right there, but out 4-5. There's that 4-5 result again against Wolves in the FA Cup fourth round. Uh, EFL Cup, losing out 2-5 to Newcastle, semifinals. Wolves actually not a great start to the season, but a much but a nice run here and there. Uh, a nice run up until the World Cup. And then post-World Cup, not so much. Very spotty up until this 4-1 win over Manchester United. Uh, and then only one loss from there on out. That's a fantastic end of the season result. But losing out in the quarters against Manchester City, nil 4 in the FA Cup. Uh, EFL Cup, did you lose out pretty quickly, it looks like? Yep, nil one against Brighton, and you're out of that. But overall, a fantastic second half of the season really picked Wolves up. Some of these right here, though, 2-2 um, Leicester, 3-all against Fulham, maybe could have turned into wins, increased a little bit. Newcastle transfers. They picked up a couple. I mean, some we've seen before, Tony Weston. Ricardo Horta from Braga for $26 million. Neto from Benfica for 450 k 
Uh, Dominguez from Gimnasia and Esgrima for 2.1 and Julian Ryerson from Dortmund for on a loan and a couple of outs here on loans. So nothing too big. Tottenham transfers. Malcolm comes in from Zenit, 32 and a half. Donny Vandebeek from Manchester United. We've seen him before. Uh, he comes in though. And then outs, no one really. Niall John as usual. Wolves transfers. Ricardo Isagio from Isagio, Isagio, Isagio. I don't know. Sporting CP, uh, 4.8 million. And then again, outs is Lembikisa for 950K. Diogo Costa for 1 million. And then Griffiths for a 125K. Newcastle squad, not looking too bad. A couple more greens than we're used to. Uh, 7.11 is the highest, though. 7.21, there you go, for St. Maximin. 7.45, I didn't even see for Isaac. Yeah, he did very well. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the top of the charts. So looking at the squad for Tottenham, a lot more green than we've seen in the past. Uh, just over sevens, though. Nothing too massive. Wolf squad looking not too bad. I mean, there's a couple of players here, but some of them are on loan. So definitely pause it where you want to see your players. But Sarabia was 728. 770 for Kolod Kolodzic. I don't know how to pronounce that, but only three off the bench. So I'm not really putting too much stock in that one. Newcastle, shaky in defense. Very good in attack, though. You can see the numbers in attack are fantastic. Uh, the team defending, not very good at all. Conceded per game is looks like it get off the screen is bang on average for Premier League. Same with tackles attempted. But overall, I mean, attacking great, defending not so much. Tottenham, yet again, extremely shaky in defense and very good in attack. As you can see, the attacking numbers are fantastic. Uh, the defending numbers, not so much. Not even one hitting the Premier League average. That's pretty sad. Wolves is no different. Pretty shaky or extremely shaky in defense. Very good in attack. These attacking numbers are fantastic. Only one crosses completion percentage is a little bit maybe underneath the uh, Premier League average. But defending everything is below average. Not good at all. So as you can see, this really just drives it home. This is a very attacking ta kind of tactic. This is not a defensive tactic. Newcastle and Tottenham tied for second on 83 goals. Wolves with 80. Manchester City in sixth with 70. I mean, Liverpool at 101. An absolute fantastic run for them. But Man City just blowing it. But definitely in the attacking side. Definitely not the defensive side. Fewer shots against. Nobody. Uh, most possession Tottenham. Dribbles made. Newcastle. Uh, fewest conceded nobody. Most shutouts, Newcastle with 13. So at least you got someone in the defensive side. New, most tackles won, nobody. Uh, shots, there you go. Newcastle Wolves and Tottenham all up there. Most points per game, Newcastle in there with 8.1.89. Uh, but the others two not in there, funny enough. Most goals, Harry Kane with 28. Isaac with 24, as well as Cunha. Uh, overall, a fantastic run there. Most assists, Salah. Uh, Trippier with Newcastle with 13. Pedro Porro with 11. Most man of the match awards, Isaac with 8. Cunha with 7. Most shutouts, Nick Pope for 13. Tackles won nobody. Key passes, you've got Trippier as always, 130. I mean, a fantastic set of results there. Sarabi with 96 and Neves with 84. Most shots, Isaac with 149. Cunha with 114 and Traore with 107. And then we've already seen just Kane kicking the crap out of everyone except Holland, as usual. Finishing up, as we always do, with the overall stats in all competitions. For Newcastle, Isaac with 33 goals. A fantastic result there. 7.45 average rating. Absolutely beyond just his normal average. Trippier with 18 assists and 11 player of the match awards for Isaac. A fantastic run for Newcastle. Sitting in fourth. Uh, possibly could have pipped you know, Man City with another win here and there. Even Chelsea. Getting to Liverpool at 92 is a little tough, but still... You could have had a fantastic set of results in some of these matches that you were just a little bit off, you know, either draws or just a one-point game. Yeah, it could have been a completely different story. Still, Champions League spots, you can't be unhappy about that. For Tottenham, 39 whopping goals for Harry Kane. A fantastic result. Probably one of the best results I've seen from him uh, in these tactic talks. Harry Kane was 7-11, highest average rating. Not great, though. For 39 goals, I would have... Thought kind of more. Richard Leeson, uh, Kulisevsky, and Pedro Porter with 13 assists apiece. Five player of the match awards for Kane and Kulisevsky. Overall, not fan I mean, not a bad result whatsoever. Eighth place, though, you really would have hoped for a little bit more, maybe. And then Wolves, uh, Mateus Cunha, 29 goals. Probably, again, one of the best results I've seen from him. Sarabi was 7-2-8, highest average rating. Fantastic result there. Uh, Neto, 11 assists. And then uh, Mateus Cunha with nine player of the match awards. Overall, 
This tactic actually worked pretty well. Obviously, if you took control, as I always say, you're going to hopefully do a little bit better. Uh, but Newcastle in fourth, it's really tough to beat that one. Uh, Tottenham and Wolves. Wolves in tenth, not too bad. Tottenham in eighth, eh, I guess it's a little average or maybe a little below average. So you might need new players. Uh, you might need to just mix things up a bit. But Newcastle, fantastic result. So anyway, that is it for me. Steffi and FM for the Football Manager Blog channel saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy. <laughs>